Welcome to part two of the digestive system. The last lecture was focusing on the alimentary canal. Remember, that's the continuous tube that goes from your mouth to all the way down to your anus. This one's going to focus to on the accessory organs. The accessory organs are, are really important, <laughs> again, because they help with the digestive process. They're producing enzymes. They are physically moving the food as well. So we're going to go through each of those individually. So let's start with your mouth. In, within your mouth, there are several accessory organs, starting with your teeth. I mean, you think about your teeth, they are a big part of the mechanical digestion, where they are grinding that food, they're mixing it up, and they're, they're mixing, they're just getting it everywhere instead of grinding it down. Actually, if you feel right here and go up and down, you just right here, you can feel there's a muscle there. That's called the masseter muscle. That muscle is helps your teeth go, your jaws go up and down so that you can chew that food. Another accessory organ is your tongue. Your tongue, tongue is made of skeletal muscle which makes sense because it's a voluntary muscle. And what it's really doing is helping to re reposition the food, mix the food with saliva, and also it will also uh, initiate swallowing. Remember that swallowing portion is partially voluntary, partially involuntary. So the tongue will help initiate that swallowing process. Then your taste buds are also on your tongue as well. They don't really have a digestive function, but they are. They can make the food more pleasurable to eat and therefore eat more of it and digest more. Then we have the salivary glands. Now there are several salivary glands that you can see in this picture here. We have the parotid gland, the sub... Um, sublingual, I'm sorry, sublingual is here and submaxillary or some, there's a couple different names that I learned as submaxillary gland. And so these are going to be producing saliva to help break down the food. Now there's one, it, actually, it, you can eat your cracker now. There's amylase. As you're eating your cracker, just hold it, actually just hold it in your mouth. Don't even chew it. Just hold your mouth. You'll notice that the, the cracker is starting to break down. And that is, there's amylase in your saliva that is breaking down that carbohydrate. It's a specific type of, it's amylose, it's a specific type of carbohydrate that will be broken down by the enzyme amylase in, in your saliva. So it's, it's a part of the physical digestion that's taking place in your mouth using that enzyme. And then finally in the mouth we have the palate. There's a hard palate here, and then we also have the soft palate back here. The hard palate is what it sounds like hard. It's made up of bone. In the soft palate, I mean, you can kind of feel on the roof of your tongue. The front part is harder. That's your hard palate. If you go back or further in your mouth, you can feel that there's a portion that doesn't have bone underlying it. And so that's the soft palate. Let's move to outside of the mouth then. So then we have several accessory organs mainly within the abdominal pelvic cavity. We have the liver. The liver is the largest gland in your body and its function is to produce bile. What the function of bile is, is to break down fats. And obviously we have a lot of fat in our diet as Americans and so bile is going to be an important um, product to have in our bodies to break down that fat. Now the gallbladder, if you look at this picture, the liver is this large organ here. The gallbladder is right here. It's just a little pouch that is underneath the liver. The gallbladder will store bile that is produced that doesn't isn't quite needed yet. And it will store it until it gets a signal from the duodenum. Remember the duodenum is the first two inches or so of the small intestine. And the duodenum is going to send signals, remember, to other parts of the body. So it's going to, it can send signals to the liver. It can also send signals to the gallbladder to send that bile if there is fat present in the food. So then, let's see, let's move on to the pancreas. So the pancreas is going to produce insulin, obviously to break down sugar. If you know somebody that's diabetic, insulin is not being produced by the pancreas and therefore they have to either take insulin or um, watch their diet. I know when I was pregnant with um, my son, my first pregnancy, I had gestational diabetes and fortunately I was able to just keep my blood sugar under control just by my diet and exercise. But many people aren't able to do that. They physically cannot do that and so their bodies can't handle it. So they have to take insulin because their pancreas is not producing that insulin to break down the, the sugar. 
The pancreas will also produce trypsin. Trypsin is an enzyme that will um, break down protein, much like pepsin did. And it will, again, that signal is being sent from the duodenum to send the trypsin to break down the protein. Then we have the mesenteries. The mesenteries are going to be very interesting to see when we start dissecting um, the pig and the cat because it looks just like this net, this netting that's over the intestines. It's all in this area here. And in the cat, it's like a blanket almost that's inside of it. And the mesenteries are going to have a function of taking that, there's going to be some blood vessels within that, but also holding all those organs in place. And so it's going to be able to have blood vessels that can take those, those nutrients of the intestines into the body, but also hold the intestines in place as, so that they are able to do their function. Because I mean, it's crowded in there with all these intestines, and so it's good to have them in, in not moving around. And finally, the cecum. Now, the cecum for us is not going to be um, a real important function but for some animals especially plant eaters it does have an important function because it allows them to um, break down cellulose we are not able to break down cellulose but many um, herbivores are because they have this cecum that allows them to break down the cellulose it's one of the reasons that you often um, like if you've ever changed a baby's diaper before and you've seen corn in there it's because our bodies just won't process the cellulose which is in the cell wall of the plant cell and it just won't be um, processed but we'll be able to see that when we dissect the pig so that is the end of the accessory organs for today so we will see you soon